when my daughter was alive. Wow. And that's that's and that's an incredible point. So so but what so what's his argument? He should be released. He should be uh, sent back home. Not, he not should killed. Not, should not be executed. Should not be that's executed. It. Okay. Executed. I think he should absolutely be killed. Hmm. Now, was he in the country legally? He was a, yes, he was in the country legally. He was he had been in the United States for a long time. He was a Mexican national. He was not a legal alien. He was an illegal alien. He was he was not an illegal alien. I believe he was on a visa. I, I believe. So he was here legally. Yeah, he was here legally. Okay, and that changes things too. as far as I'm concerned. I mean, as far as, far as I know. Uh, actually, you know, I don't know if it'd be better if he was illegal or illegal. Well, let's just say let's let's, let's assume that he is. Okay, let's assume he was living is. here. Yes, and he committed the crime. Yes. Okay. Either way, as long as he's living here. Uh, I don't know. I mean, these guys are, do these amazing things. Women do these horrible things. Men do horrible things. And they get on death row for 48 years. Mm. There's several, several, several appeals mm. to get themselves off. And all they do is delay, delay, delay. And that's right. what his lawyers want to do right now is push it back at least eight months. And that's going to continue and continue and continue. Sure. And what that does is that this has been going on for a long time. And it does set an example. And this is the whole process of how this system works. And it's ridiculous, even though Texas does kill them pretty fast. Comparatively. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, you know, I don't know what the solution to this one is. I, it's tough, I think. You know, unfortunately, because of the percentage of immigrants, you know, it's a little bit different. You know, if you've got an American in Singapore, that's a lot different than a Mexican in America. You know what I mean? Unfortunately, they're not the same circumstance. It's just... It's not the same thing. I mean, no matter how you look at it, and the guy was here legally on a visa. He was living and working here. I'm guessing, which is a lot different than, you know, traveling to. Foreign country, just as a tourist. It's uh, you're living here, you're subject. I don't think he can say that he really needs access to the consulate. I I don't know. Well, that's, don't well it's just, it's supposed to be just one of his rights. That's the thing. Um, like I said, my view is kill him because it shows. It sets those totally wrong example to anybody in this country, whether you be an illegal alien, uh, uh, somebody from another country here legally, or an American themselves, is that you commit a horrible crime. He's not. He has not been sorry for what he's done. He's not been apologetic at all to the family. Um, and it's just, hey, I need to push this thing back. As long as I don't get executed, that's all I want to do. And because I can work the system, which is what all these people do, and they do it well because it's easily done, it delays, 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 and it's ridiculous to me. Very, you know, just crazy, crazy topics. Speaking of crazy topics, uh, while we're on the subject real fast, is that in Ohio a, a, is an inmate who claims that he is too fat to be executed. I saw that on uh, on Drudge Today, I too. Did. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> I, I get something about his veins, and he couldn't... Uh, yeah, he couldn't find the veins. <laughs> couldn't find the veins. So, so if you're sitting on, on death row, and uh, you want to you want to avoid uh, the lethal injection, which I, I don't, I'm not a big on lethal injection. You know, uh, just do firing squad. You know what I mean? Yeah. Right, 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 right. Bam. You know I what I'm talking about? Yeah. What, what does it matter? It doesn't. It, it doesn't. The, the end result and, is the same. You know, and the way you do firing squad, I, I had a, a professor who actually uh, was part of the very last firing squad execution in the United States in Utah. Yeah, I don't know if I ever told you. He, yeah, he, 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 wasn't, he didn't actually fire, but the way they do it, you know, they get five people to line up with rifles. The guy goes and he turns around. Four of them have... Uh, uh, have a bullet and one's a blank, and they all fire. And if you're, you know, any qualified marksman is going to know if you're firing, whether it's a blank or 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 a live round. But anyways, the idea is all the guns go off, but one of them doesn't have uh, a bullet, right? So you don't know which guy actually killed him. Uh -huh. But anyways, fire squad, quick, easy, you know, just shoot them on a shoot the plastic and then done. Yeah, but the point is, if you're going to be on death row, make sure you eat, exercise very little, sit around, and get really fat because they're not going to have any veins, and you won't be executed. It's absolutely ridiculous. Fat, not fat, illegal alien, totally ridiculous. An American, kill them. If they if they rape and murder somebody, you kill them. Well, let's. I'm going to move on here. I've got a new segment. Actually, we've got a new contributor to the show, and you know, as much as you guys love Ryan and I, we wanted to add a little bit to the to the show. So this week, we're introducing. Uh, a new segment, uh, the contributor, this is from uh, a gentleman by the name of Jeb Tadhole, and uh, we're going to transition into 
some some talk about the economy and uh, the nature of the the Federal Reserve and income tax and that kind of thing and the state of the economy. And so we're going to start off with a little commentary from Jeb. Uh, if you want some more detail on who he is and what he does and these types of things, um, we just have one simple request, and that's a don't ask. So uh, here here we go. This is uh, this is from Jeb, and uh, hope you guys enjoy it. And uh, we'll be right back after this. The Vigilante Show proudly presents a commentary by Jeb Tadhole. The hello, the hello, Jeb Tadhole here, coming to talk to you today about the American economy. That's right, and its problems, your problems, my problems. But why those problems caused by those problems, and hell, why those problems are problematic. See, see, not long ago, when I was reading the Old Testament, I came across the, the book of Job. He's right. The book of Job. His life and his struggles reminded me of myself and why I was named Jeb after the biblical Job. J-E-B to remind me of the economy of my country. And right then and there, see, I could, I could hear the words, uh, old green peppy tail. Oh, he used to say to me, Jib, Jib, A, B, C, one, two, three, get your lazy ass out of my house. That's right. That made me think of a J-O-B, a job. See, my granddaddy, Tao taught me lots of things. You know, especially those things that had to do with monetary production. Nah, hell, I didn't study no economical principles or writings or big books, you know, with words and letters in it that talked about things from Adam Smith and John Pope, G, whatever his name is. Besides, all those guys with their fancy words and letters, you know, and pages and pens and pencils. They never taught me how to produce Smoky Mountain moonshine so strong that it felt like getting kicked in the mouth by an Appalachian woman overcome by sporadic Jimmy Leg. No. See, Green Peppy Ted Ho, he taught me the value of hard work and hard liquor. Hell, I went to work when I was, you know, hell, I don't know, five or six years old, and I worked every day since. My first J-O-B was in Death Road Tanning Bomb Sweatshop. I was making mouse traps and bear traps and wolf traps and Galapagos Island Green Mountain Gorilla traps and hell, even specialty traps designed for archaic creatures whose cranial cavities were hexagon shaped and whatnot. Well, that cheap son of a bitch only paid me 11 cents a day every day till I was 25 years old. But, see, it was that money, that hard-earned money, helped finance six years of unfinished school. And see, till this day, it's those six years that served as my educational foundation. See, it was those years I learned the value and integrity only a J-O-B could provide. See, Grandpappy Tejo used to say, Jamba, a good jab is vital. you like a vital organ is vital to your body. Like a, like a gallbladder, your appendix, or, or your spleen, or organs of that nature. And Jeb is... If you lose it, it's gonna hurt like hell, you know. So, so, so don't. Not to mention, Jeb, it usually goes hand in hand with vomiting by our ear. And nobody likes you when you're throwing up and pooping all over the place, you know. See, this country right now is throwing up and pooping all over the place. What this country needs is to return to the days of good, solid work. Good, solid work that only Bad, extremely low paying jobs can provide. But the economy needs stability. The stability that only 
good sweatshop labor can provide. 